it can be hard to look at a parametric equation and have any real idea of what its graph is going to look like. There's a standard trick that can sometimes help you with that called elimination of the parameter. We'll introduce this method via example. You have two equations and you pick an equation You solve for t, and then you substitute it into another, the other equation. At least that's the general idea. There can sometimes be wrinkles to this, but looking at what we have up here, if y equals t plus one, then t equals y minus one. And if we take this, and plug it in there, we get x equals y minus one squared. So here's what this curve looks like, sort of. You are missing some information though. If we remember, I know I didn't exactly dwell on it when I showed this example. T is between a zero and five. So of the curve we just saw, some points on those curves, on that curve, are going to correspond to values of t outside this interval. It's probably going to be helpful to look at a few points. When t equals zero, x is zero and y is one. So there's our initial value. And when t equals five, x is 25, y is a six. So that's our terminal value. So what's happening is that the curve starts at zero, one, and then as time passes, we move along the curve in this direction until we reach this point. 25, 6, at which point the interval has ended. So of the curve we got by eliminating the parameter, only this part of it is actually on the graph. Let's briefly look at one more example of eliminating parameters. And I talked about wrinkles. This is a wrinkle 
we're not going to solve for t here. It's a pretty famous example, though. Good for you to see where x is the sine and y is the cosine. And what we're going to observe is that according to the Pythagorean identity, the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals one, and the sine squared is x, and the cosine, or rather the sine is x, and the cosine is y. So x squared plus y squared equals one. The curve that this parametric equation gets us is the unit circle. And we can now look at our interval. We start at zero. The sine of zero is zero. The cosine of zero is one. So we start there. Time passes, t equals pi over two. Now the sine is zero, or rather, sorry, the sine is one, the cosine is zero. T equals pi. The sine is zero, the cosine is negative one. Three pi over two, two pi. So this is not going to look anything like a circle. My artistic skills are truly poor, but we travel once around the unit circle, starting here and going in the clockwise direction.